apparently not sure what this is supposed to mean. Hey everybody, welcome. We're gonna try something new here with this video. We're going to go through an entire chase, talk about the strategy, the forecast, the decisions made during chase time, all of those things just to kind of see. We're, we're going to see how this works, see if the learning experience is good. After you're done watching, let us know in the comments how you feel, but let's get to this. This is the May 4th, 2019 chase. Let's take a look at a few of the forecast details. There's no place to start like the experts. And here we are, the SPC outlook. There's a slight risk running along the Texas, New Mexico border. This is going to generally be the target area, of course, and then you're going to have a 2% tornado risk. So the tornado threat, not the highest, it's non-zero though. This is the kind of signal that there's a marginal supercell environment out there, especially when you look at the hell risk which is a 15%. So the atmosphere is supportive of supercells today, but not huge hell, not big tornadoes, but we could eke out a supercell today. That's the goal. Let's see what we can do with this. We begin our chase driving towards Roswell, New Mexico. This allows us to kind of have a couple of different targets in play. One along the border where a confluence line is taking shape to separate directions of wind are combining there and the other one the storm coming off the mountains you never know the moisture is going to be a little less but we can't discount the possibility that you could get a great supercell coming off of those mountains when you look at the dew points again this is the high plains low 50s it doesn't look so great 40s in new mexico you're like what why are you chasing today it's because on the high plains you actually don't need 60 dew points you know 55 is doing really really good 50 is pretty marginal. You know, once you get below 50, you're really pushing it in terms of getting something pretty worthwhile. But still, there's these 50s eking in the southwest, or excuse me, southeast New Mexico, have mid 50s in the Texas Panhandle. Those are all moving north and west. So we've got a good fetch of moisture moving north and west into our target region, really liking what the moisture looks like right now. Now to back up in time just a little bit, in Roswell, looking at these weak things coming off the mountains that moisture is definitely lacking to the west of roswell toward the mountains beginning to think that we may not be able to get a storm forming off of those mountains so i think the next option at this point looking at these visually it just they, they don't look that great so i think we need to start looking at that eastern target area where that cumulus field is really becoming agitated i think that's going to be where we go next. And as we start heading toward this cube field, you can see this looks better. These things have that look to them. They've got a little bit of upward development. They're very dynamic looking. I think we're on the right track here. And just a note on your target area, you know, you should always try to stick with a target area as much as possible because your morning forecast is usually pretty good. You don't want to be abandoning it too quickly. But at the same time, if you're hedging like I did today, heading east, not a big deal at this point because it's pretty obvious where you need to be for the best storm at this point in the day. And wouldn't you know it, we're in luck. We have a mesoscale discussion that was just issued. East, southeast winds bringing that moisture up. This is going to be a pretty decent day, I think, at this point. You can see we have 2,000 of surface cape. This is a good number to get some robust updrafts really making it happen and more importantly we have 40 knots of zero to six kilometers shear that is definitely supercell territory folks this could end up being a little bit of a sleeper it took almost 40 minutes to get to this storm but look we've got a blip southwest of clovis this is definitely happening now we have a storm developing it has a really good look Looking up at this base, it is just, it's good. It looks good. This is a dark base. It's getting wider. Anytime you have those bases getting wider, means your storm is strengthening. This looks good. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another one. Lightning's picking up. Lightning's picking up. Oh my gosh, that was scary. <laughs> oh, we just had lightning hit really close. Look at this base, look at this storm. Everything about this is screaming intensification. 
We'll take a look at the radar here in a second, but as you heard me freaking out about, lightning also picking up. All these are signs that this storm is taking off and getting ready to be awesome. And taking a look at this storm on radar, doesn't look that impressive just yet. That's probably because of our lower dew points. It happens, the lower instability, lower dew points. It's still taking shape. It's gonna take a little bit longer. It's not explosive, explosive development, but it's happening. And taking a look at the satellite image, it looks like there's a couple of storms. We're on ours here east of Clovis. There's also another one forming about two counties south, but we're getting kind of close to sunset. That one is not on the table. This one is the storm of the day for us. Now, as this storm keeps developing, you can start seeing it right back there in the back, right here again in this time lapse. You can see it beyond our current updraft. Looks like there's another one. This storm is going to stay somewhat isolated because there's nothing to the south of it, but there's clearly two storms developing here. And that's always an interesting conundrum because do you choose the front storm? Do you choose the back storm? Luckily on the high plains, there's enough visibility that you can kind of choose both for a little bit. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Now this is a great example of when radar imagery is running a little bit behind what you see visually. Visually, the west storm looks like the one. That's the one where there's scud coming up from underneath the updraft. Everything looks primed and there it is. The west one just is happening. The east one clearly dying. So west winds, easy does it. Let's make this happen. Storm is the east storm. It's, they're splitting now. That one's still like on its way out, dying. One we're interested in though is this one. More specifically, that area right in there that keeps trying to lower. Look interesting. As is often the case, this storm continues to strengthen into the evening thanks to the low level winds increasing, so shear has increased. Doesn't take a genius to tell you this thing's rotating. We're continuing to watch to see if this thing can ever form a wall cloud that base remains flat. You can see how the bottom area looks smoothed out. That means there's some increasing capping taking place. So getting a tornado is, you know, you start seeing it get more difficult at this point. But regardless, I think it's time for us to head closer to get a better look at this thing. As we drive to get into a position, better position underneath this updraft, or at least a better view of it in case we get tornado time, you're going to start seeing scud start forming underneath there. We're actually starting to get the first vestiges of a wall cloud finally with this storm. It means it's getting a little bit more dangerous. We need to keep an eye on that area for sure. And taking a look at the radar signature, this thing obviously looks more cyclonic. It's got that nice curve to it. The supercell starting to get a little bit more interesting as we head into evening. Will this wall cloud last? That's the question though, because oftentimes you'll get these quick bursts of a wall cloud toward the evening, almost like a last gasp and the storm then proceeds to kind of lose its tornadic ability as the capping increases. So we'll have to see what happens. So as the last time lapse showed this storm, the wall cloud looks like it's going to happen and then it just never does organize. Very, that's always tough to see because it means that this storm isn't quite getting over that hump. It's not quite going to produce a tornado because it cannot get itself organized long enough to do so. It's at this point that updraft base has gone flat. We're going to head east, try to get one last good shot of structure, but tornado threat, I'm telling you, it doesn't look good at this point with that base becoming flat, raising again. So we're going to look at this one more time, get a little bit more footage, and then it's time to head home because this storm is done. So some key lessons to take from this day as we head back to the house. First one, very simple. 
never discount a day, even if it's just a slight risk 2%, because you can get an incredible supercell. That structure that we had there, it was pretty brief, but man, it looked good. For about an hour, this storm had a lot going for it. Also, anytime you get a supercell, anytime you get something that looks like a wall cloud, does not mean a tornado is imminent. It takes some persistence for that to, to actually happen. Also, multiple storms in an area, best to keep yourself with options open as long as possible so you can commit one way or the other. It allows you to never get caught by surprise. So as we wave goodbye to our supercell, I just want to remind you, if you like this video, be sure to like it, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment. We'll see you next time.